Joe Rogan. His popularity is undeniable, and dozens of comedians and podcasters owe their entire career in large part to him, but some people view him in a less favorable light, both for the fact that he has fostered the careers of blights on the comedy world like Brendan Schaub, and because of Joe's own stand-up, which is often seen as a little lowbrow. Recently, I decided to watch Joe's two Netflix specials, Triggered and Strange Times. Why? Because I realized I hadn't actually watched much of Joe's recent stand-up, and I thought it was about time I got around to him. Going into this, I wasn't entirely unfamiliar with Joe Rogan. I've actually watched his comedy since at least 2005 or 2006. Because of that, my expectations had been colored by years of stoner philosophy, stool humping, and screaming. Joe's most recent specials definitely carry on that tradition. Let's start with Triggered. It may seem like a strange place to begin, but what is going on with Joe's shirt? I know it's weird to go after somebody's fashion during a comedy special, but it's really distracting. He could at least honor the Cambodian kids who died in a sweatshop making that shirt by having the dignity to tuck it in. As is, he looks like a child who found his way into his father's closet. But I digress. Joe starts the special by walking out and saying he's high. Woo! I'm high as fuck! Woo! Because dude, weed. LMAO. And right off the bat, there was a bunch of screaming and face pulling. For some reason, Joe was also speaking with this weird stoner guy voice like he just had a bong hit transplant. This leads to a segment about taking edibles and talking to dolphins. Overall, I think this is one of the better bits from the special, and features a pretty funny joke about how dolphins are smarter than people because nobody accidentally catches dolphins while fishing, but if the situation was flipped and cheeseburgers were floating down the street, people would be getting caught all the time. Maybe it's just funny because it's the premise of an episode of Spongebob Squarepants. Although this joke is moderately amusing, Joe repeatedly does something that irritates me. I'm going to call it his dumb guy says a smart thing routine. Joe will go on a long rant about philosophy or society. I watched a dolphin documentary and it said they have a cerebral cortex that's 40% larger than a human being's. And then end it with a line about how dumb or high he is. I don't know what that means, but if you say it right and don't fuck up the words, it makes you sound smarter than you really are. I know I just perfectly articulated 11 hydroxy metabolite and the nature of a dolphin's cerebral cortex, but whoa, I'm so high right now, dude. We get it, Joe. You started smoking the Mary Jane in your mid-30s, and you made your entire personality about being a middle-aged pothead with cringy tattoos. Wait a minute. Joe talked about dolphins on the special. Chris D'Elia has a bit about dolphins on No Pain, too. Is this like the black tank top theory of hack comedians? If you know of any other comics with dolphin bits in their act, leave a comment on my web zone and I'll send you a pizza roll. Honestly, though, it probably wasn't fair to mention Triggered alongside the sewage treatment plant explosion that is No Pain. Triggered isn't that bad. It's not very good, though, either. Sure, there are a few legitimately funny jokes, but the majority of this special is just Joe screaming mediocre punchlines and doing downright embarrassing physical comedy. That's a guy who wants to die! I'm gonna do this! Fuck you! Oh my god, I'm doing it! Oh my god, I'm doing it! Ah! What are my kids gonna think when they see a mountain or a rose? Why am I alive? Does a salmon ever get to eat the eagle? No, bang! I can't! Even though Joe is constantly saying that he is a moron, he does sometimes try to show off how smart he really is. Like when he's talking about how the presidency is an old, archaic idea from a time when people wrote with feathers. Joe doesn't think we should have a president, but also thinks instead of Trump and Hillary, the candidate should have been geniuses like Elon Musk and Mark Cuban. This is all sort of filler before Joe embarks on a bit about somebody breaking into the White House because the front door is being guarded by a woman, which Joe uses to make the point that there is no such thing as physical equality. But really, it just turns into a men are different than women bit straight from the 90s that features jokes about Shaq's penis, lots of screaming, and of course, more wacky physical comedy. You know I'm not making this up. We've all seen this. This is recognizable. Now, we've only gotten about 25 minutes into the special, and the second half of the special is where the wheels really fell off for me. During this part of the special, Joe starts to work through a lot of really Joe Rogany premises. He thinks it's crazy that there are Instagram models with millions of followers. He thinks people are crazy for wanting to go to Mars. And rockets are giant metal dicks that we use to fuck the sky. It's a robot dick and we're trying to fuck the sky! He has a tepid bit about Scientology that he uses to segue into a bit about religion in general, and then Islam in particular, focusing on the Charlie Hebdo attacks. 
Joe goes on a rant about how other publications weren't willing to print drawings of Muhammad. And it's not like Joe's take here is bad or wrong. He just doesn't have anything interesting or funny to add to the story, other than bringing up a Draw Muhammad contest in Texas, where an attack was thwarted because Texans are badasses or something. I know the special is only four years old, but it has such a dated quality to it. I mean, just look at the title. Does anything scream at mid-2010s edgy centrist harder than the word triggered? Social commentary doesn't have to feel dated. If done well, good social commentary can hold up for years or even decades. The jokes on Triggered had an expiration date of six months after the special was released. Joe also tends to go on a lot of these long-winded rants to show you what a big brain smart boy he is because he can scream a long string of words at you from memory. But they're painfully rehearsed, and the passion he wants to convey turns into this red-faced shouting of a constipated man trying to take a giant elk meat shit. The universe does not want even! It wants conflict and resolution and constant improvement! I can understand what he's going for with these bits but it's overwritten to the point that every single word is supposed to be a punchline. And we're supposed to be impressed by the deep insight into the universe and the human condition possessed by this MMA-fighting, weed-smoking philosopher. But most of the time it comes off as a bad Bill Hicks rant screamed by a bad impersonation of Sam Kinison. There is one moment from the special that is pretty funny in hindsight. During a rant about how you can't trust people from places where they all sound the same, you gotta be nervous of places with accents, okay? Joe makes a comment that hasn't exactly aged well. It's one of the reasons why I can prove that California is the best spot to live. This is made doubly ironic because when Joe is making the case that you can't mock Californians for talking the same, he's doing it in that overly affected stoner valley girl accent that he adopted after moving to LA. The closer of the special is a pretty lengthy segment about Caitlyn Jenner that I think was supposed to be offensive. Or maybe Bruce Jenner lived with demons. But in reality, I think Joe is just projecting a lot of really deep insecurities he has about his own masculinity being threatened by those around him. I'm not going to delve into Joe Rogan's psychology, but keep in mind that this is a man who has taken so much testosterone and human growth hormone that it has completely changed his physical appearance. Personally, I didn't find this bit particularly funny, or offensive, or really relevant in any way. Again, it feels really dated and cringy, particularly when Joe is doing his ridiculous stool-climbing physical comedy. I can't be one of you. I was, I was born a man. Nonsense! Overall, I would say that Triggered isn't the worst special I've ever watched. It's kind of boring, but there were occasionally funny moments. It did literally give me a headache, though, because of Joe's constant screaming. The physical comedy was expectedly cringe-inducing, but I wouldn't put it up there with, say, the leather special. I wouldn't watch it again, but it wasn't completely intolerable. On to our next special, Strange Times. In general, I think Strange Times is a slightly better special than Triggered. I got a few more chuckles out of it at least, and the set seemed to be structured a little better than Triggered too. There aren't as many moments where Joe goes off on rehearsed rants, and the pacing in general just feels a little better. There are moments that are drawn out for too long, but they're fewer and farther between this time around. There are problems, though. Strange Times is kind of repetitive. Joe's opening bit is basically a rehash of his bit on Triggered about not having a president. It's not exactly the same, but the premise is fairly similar. We shouldn't have a popularity contest to decide who controls everything, and Joe even sort of repeats his punchline about presidents being an idea from a time when people wrote with feathers. It's a stupid job invented back when people used to write with feathers. It's dumb. It's a ridiculous idea to have a popularity contest to see who controls everything. Because if you could go back in time and grab Thomas Jefferson and bring him to 2018, his first question would be, you guys didn't write any new shit? Dude, I wrote that with a feather. Also, Joe is wearing another one of those oversized dress shirts for some reason. This one is so big it comes past his hands. It's hard enough to take anything Joe says seriously, but it's borderline impossible when he looks like he got his shirt from Ralphie Mae's estate sale. But again, I digress. The majority of Strange Times is devoted to social commentary, though thankfully with less of the try-hard edginess from Triggered. As an example, Joe had a pretty decent bit about how he's sexist against men, and uses the Harvey Weinstein scandal as an example. I am sexist. But I'm sexist against men. That's criminal. I think that guy's a piece of shit. I think he should be punished. If he had done the exact same thing to men, I wouldn't give a fuck. 
If Harvey offered his daughter a movie role, Joe would fuck him up. But if Harvina Weinstein offered his son a movie role, Joe wouldn't care. Society in general doesn't care when men are sexually harassed. But if Harvina Weinstein came to my son with a solid contract, I'd be like, dude, you're gonna be Batman. It's not a bad joke, but it's not very nuanced or clever either. Which isn't helped by Joe screaming at the top of his lungs and imitating a fat woman getting her pussy eaten. A lot of the special is like this. It's just middling social commentary about the different rules society has for men and women, like the fact that female anchors on Fox News are allowed to wear short dresses and show their cleavage. There's nothing really remarkable here. I mean, he has a bit where he says that calling things gay isn't meant as a slur against gay people. These are the kind of radical takes from 2003 that Joe devotes about 20 minutes to in the middle of his special. There is another dolphin reference though, so I'm beginning to think that there is something to my theory. Smooth, slippery skin that doesn't exist in nature outside the dolphin community. Things do pick up about halfway through the special when Joe starts talking about vegans. He goes through a lot of his boilerplate vegan talking points, but when he gets to the story of the vegan cat hashtag on Twitter, the bit is actually reasonably funny. It's probably the best part of the special for me because I think it's one of the few moments where Joe's physical comedy and screaming actually works. Their eyes lock on that squirrel and they start making these involuntary mouth noises like <laughs> You ever see a cat do that? It's so fucking creepy! I'm not entirely against physical comedy or screaming and funny voices. They just have to be used appropriately. Physical comedy, accents, and yelling are just comedic tools, and when they're used appropriately, they enhance a joke. When Joe is imitating a yowling cat and he's making noises and weird faces, it's appropriately over the top. The problem is that Joe never stops doing this. Joe treats his jokes like a mediocre piece of meat that you drown in sauce to make it taste better. In this case, the sauce is wacky faces, ridiculous physical comedy, and constant fucking yelling. Maybe you find that funny. Comedy is subjective. To me, it's not unlike adding a laugh track to a sitcom so the audience is conditioned to laugh. And I just find it exhausting to be screamed at for an hour. There is some funny material in Joe's bit about pets, but it drags on until the 45 minute mark. The last 15 minutes of Strange Times have some funny moments, but overall it's pretty hit and miss. He has a reasonably funny bit about people these days not believing in miracles, and Joe mentions the story of a girl in Africa who was born without a vagina but got pregnant after giving somebody a blowjob and getting into a knife fight. The payoff being that if Jesus were to come back, he'd come back as the blowjob knife fight baby. I mean, it's pretty funny if you listen to the whole bit. During this bit, Joe impersonates said baby, who he dubs Matumbo, <laughs> and does what I think was supposed to be an African accent, but sounded Jamaican instead. Mom ain't got no vagina. <laughs> Suck a dick, get stabbed. On the other hand, there is a bit about women being greedy for wanting to make all the babies and be president at the same time, which just felt like a dud to me. I think it really only existed so Joe could transition into his closing bit. Joe starts off by saying that if he were a woman, he would be a feminist because of all the stuff that men try to do to women. Men start all of the wars and do all the murdering and the raping, which is why Joe can't understand men's rights activists. What about men's rights? Shut the fuck up. Men cause most of the murder. Men cause most of the rape. Joe makes his argument mostly to say that you can make broad generalizations about entire gender if you're talking about men, but you can't criticize women without making a lot of people angry. To get his point across, Joe talks about how women don't invent much. Women have invented like 40 things ever. Joe's trying to be a little edgy again, so most of the jokes here are like, la get me a sandwich to your jokes about women inventing the washing machine and chocolate chip cookies. The jokes are a bit hacky, but it does feel like Joe's building to something kind of big. Then he ends the special with a fairly anticlimactic joke about the tampon being invented by a man because the idea to handle a period by stuffing something in a vagina is a man's kind of solution. Fuck that! We're gonna make a cotton dick and just stuff it up there! It was pretty underwhelming. Which is how I would describe Joe's Netflix specials for the most part. They're far from the worst comedy specials I've ever watched, and I even laughed from time to time. I wouldn't call them good though. Joe is a functional joke writer who has been doing comedy for decades. He doesn't make a lot of huge mistakes, but his comedy also feels mechanical and laborious at times. There weren't many moments that surprised me or caught me off guard the way a really good comedian can. 
At times, Joe tried to push boundaries, but for me, his attempts felt hacky and ham-fisted. There was never a moment like Louis C.K.'s SNL joke about pedophiles, where a masterful comedian can navigate a controversial subject and make you laugh at an unpleasant idea. I think that's what Joe is going for on more than one occasion, but he falls pretty short of pulling it off. The majority of his material is pretty broad social commentary, interspersed with a few rogan -y tidbits about shit like nature, warrior DNA, and weed, man. And the entire time, he's mugging for the camera, prancing around the stage, and screaming nonstop. I just don't enjoy that very much, and I can't see myself ever watching these specials a second time. As always, I want to thank you for watching the video, as well as liking, commenting, and subscribing. I know it's a shorter video, but I do have something bigger in the works. For the time being, I just wanted to do another comedy review to keep some content up. If you'd like to help out the channel, check out my Twitter and Patreon. And a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thank you. Fight Back CBD, Ryan Sidor, Zelda Z, Dirtbag Thor, Erica Hughes, Bart Wackenar, Milad, Dan Thomas, Mike Robals, Bone CK, James Taylor, Raghav Verma, Rexaw, CR Guitar, Dalton Windham, Tambi Helmick, The Son of Man, Neem, Kevin Howard, and Jackie.